George Kilpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. So this week, the world was stunned when Bill Cosby was released from a Pennsylvania prison. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court said that a previous agreement was not upheld. And so that meant that Bill Cosby would be exonerated immediately. Now, upwards of scores, if you will, uh, upwards of 50, 60, who knows what the count is, of women have accused Mr. Cosby of uh, sexually assaulting them, uh, using um, drugs, putting them in his in their drinks, and then assaulting them. And in this case, it was Andrea Constand, whose case was about to expire, who then got a prosecutor to take her case up, and he was convicted in in that case. But the court said that the essentially that conviction had to be overturned because the a previous agreement that if he gave a deposition in a civil case, that he, would, he was under the understanding that he would not be charged. Angela Douglas is the co-director of Vera House, uh, where I'm also, uh, well, you know, I work there too. And so uh, Angela, what, and Angela's also the co-chair co, uh, of the Survivors Network. Uh, Angela herself, a survivor of sexual assault, domestic violence. Um, you know, she's a survivor. So um, I asked Angela to come on here. And by the way, this is a tough week for her, but she's agreed to come on to share her thoughts and reflections on this. Now, let me add one more thing. Bill, Com Bill Cosby is complicated for the Black community. Because Bill Cosby is an icon. Bill Cosby created some of the most iconic program pr programming that elevated and celebrated Black folks in their glory. Different world meant that many people would look at HBCUs in a different light, et cetera, et cetera, philanthropic, all of the above. And so I heard this on the show today, and I want us to grapple with this, or at least consider this. Both can be true yeah okay he can be all of that and it can be this other. all right so angela you you got the mic now go well i i actually wanted to for a moment because it has been absolutely devastating growing up the way that i have the cosby show is what let me know I could be a black woman and be anything I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different world showed me that my peer group could be just as valued as anyone else's. Mm -hmm. So college experience, HBCU, all. So, so when you think about that, just, just dealing with the conviction itself is complicated. Yeah. But then now to come to this place, I think it's devastating for survivors. Most of us do not choose the court system and the justice system for our place of healing and accountability because it is never served. And it's actually more harmful than it is helpful. So this, this is an epitome of that. That, that is, no justice really is possible when we're talking about men, wealthy, and people of affluence. Mm. And that further complicates, right? Because in, in our community, George, how many are really all of those things? Right. Or even women mm -hmm. of wealth and affluence, right? And to be as iconic as they are. And then and then have the, the 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 things that he has done are egregious and he admitted to those things right. when you and i talked about that the other day that that just that that actually did something to me which was he admitted that he admitted those things but yet he's not willing to be accountable for those things he has lived the better part of his life right and he said I did those things, right? For the Correct. purposes of Correct. having sex with these women, right? Correct. And I think that as we look at 
the reactions. I mean, the, the reactions are all over the place. And I guess the question for, for survivors, for men, uh, and, and I felt like it was important for men to be voiced in this conversation because the typical guy response I'm hearing um, or, 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 or some of what I'm hearing, Angela, is about, well, they should have known. They should have known. Ah. Uh. Right? Or you that's why you got to tell your daughters not to do certain things or be certain places or be with certain people. And I'm not hearing them say anything about what his obligation is. The thing that troubles me, and I'll just share this with you, and I think, well, we, you know what I feel. We talked about this, right? Yeah. The thing that is that, and then the refusal to, to acknowledge that you were a predator in these situations and, and, and get the healing, right? You thought that that was cool and you won't take accountability. And I think, as you know, the work that we do in Vera House is about us examining the ugly truths about our own stuff and saying, wow, I did that. I know that. And then saying in the next breath, wow, that wasn't right. I'm glad I'm doing better now. And I can, I can share my truth with other men and we can all do better because you, yeah. You know, what just came to me, George, when you said that, and I've been a follower of Bill Cosby, my whole, my whole life. Right. He was also one of the greatest critics to the black community. Yes, he was. Right. Yeah. And what's profound about that is his criticism of our own community, which which I think there are things we we can do better. There are things there are things that that should be looked at and reflected upon. But what you just articulated, he couldn't do for himself. Recognize the impact on the victims. And what you also articulated is, men around the world don't see these women as victims. They see it as it having been their choice, right? Yeah. Speak to this. Because I had this conversation, I'm going to call him out. I had this conversation with my dentist today, and, and he knows who he is. And he says, you know, the thing that bothers me is that they waited so long. They waited so long to say anything. I said, you know something? I said, a lot of people say that. But you know, a lot of people don't ever tell anybody that they've been sexually abused or sexually assaulted, that they, that they hold that. And there are times in their lives where some people have felt, I, I don't know what to call it, but have felt it was time. I'll use that language. Yes. That it was time for them to say what happened to them. Yeah. Right. Yes. That, the, that, the, that it was time for them to say what happened to them, but they're not any un, under, there's a, there's this perception and, and a lot of guys have this perception that victims, survivors, if they're women, uh, many of them are men who are not disclosing, that there's an obligation that they have to tell somebody what happened. This is what I heard. I was listening to a radio uh, today. Well, they should tell somebody, tell somebody. They need to come forward. They need to, as soon as it happens, you don't know what's going on in that situation. So from the survivor's network, from a survivor of sexual assault, give us that Shut that down, if you will, yeah, around, yeah. okay? I can, I can shut it down. The question is, will they try to open it back up? Because, right. okay. but let's just even take, he used drugs. That's right. not uncommon, right? Right, right. But, but I, but I want to go back further when you said they should have known, right? Back when we were growing up, there was, if you eat on this side of the menu, you know that that means something. Right. <laughs> growing up. I was a young teenager and 20 some year old. If you eat on that side of the menu, that means something. If I go back to your house, that means something. So there was all of these hidden messaging that it was to be understood that you would give sex because I took you to dinner, you you ordered X, Y, or Z, or because that that's that was the expectation. Let's talk about that because women's bodies are not their own. Mm. They are commodified. 
they they it is the expectation that they give whenever they are required and demanded to give and mm. so with your drug if you are in a situation where this has happened to you you might wake up the m- next morning and not even really recall everything that has gone on and you start to question you start to assess your body to find out what really has occurred then here's the other thing with drugs and trauma all of your memories do not come back instantly Mm -hmm. some things come back over time certain things trigger memories of things that you're like whoa other folks that i know in survivors network will say i i assumed it was my fault anyways i just shouldn't have went back to the room so then they start to self-blame. Yeah, and a lot of guys will, will, would agree with that. And unfortunately, and a lot of guys would agree with that, right? So as women, we fall into that. So why didn't we tell? Because you already would have said it was our fault anyways. So so I can tell you, I, I didn't tell. I didn't tell George until I was 45 years old. Oh, word. Because, because I didn't think anybody cared to know. I thought right. the expectation was my body was everybody else's but my own. You didn't tell your truth until you were 45. Until I was 45 years old. Right. And so by this logic, well, why didn't you come through sooner? Or why didn't you say something soon? Right? But that's, yes. this is by this logic. I, I can tell you, I was a child. I was childhood sexual abuse, generational domestic violence. I was raped on one college campus, transferred to another, and assaulted in the library at another. Okay? Now. The first thing people are going to think of, what's going on with you? Are you one of them fast girls? Or in today's language, you're just a thought anyways. I was in the library doing my work. I went to a party with my girlfriend. She left me for another guy. I was sitting there and this guy was here. And he, 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 exactly what we're saying is he felt as though my body was his. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? We need to stop victim blaming. We need to recognize that trauma in our in our culture, our environment, our social norms produce such a circumstance that people feel like they can't tell, right? Mm-hmm. We will not believe you will blame us. Right. And we also have to recognize that the way trauma works means that sometimes our brain is trying to catch up with our body. Mm. And sometimes we have to do a little bit of healing in order to get the courage to tell. So Vera House put out a statement um, making making sure that survivors are affirmed in their truths, uh, availing the community of the Vera House services, the 24-hour chat line, uh, verahouse.org, or the crisis and support line, 315-468-3260. And... I guess, in summary, Angela, what do you want the community to know about how survivors can be healing right even in this moment? Because what we're, the perception is, this is a setback and this will mean that other survivors won't come forward to tell. They may have been grappling with it and they saw this happen and they don't want to tell the truth. What are you saying to that person? What are you saying to our community? What are you saying as a director here at Vera House, at Vera House. So what I'm saying to survivors is um, this is hard. Healing is hard. And we get to choose what system of justice we we desire. Mm -hmm. It, it It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to look like this. And our our healing can't stop because we are not recognized or seen or as valued. Mm. We also need though men to stand up and start thinking about the norms, the things that culture has told them that is okay, the things that just what we talked about, what you heard, why would they? There's lots of reasons why we would. 
but there's lots of reasons why we shouldn't be taken advantage of and consent is a really important thing and until we start to normalize consent consent means i enthusiastically say yes i, I want to participate in this with you and until you get the enthusiastic yes i want to participate in this with you then it's a no that's that's a first place to start for our community We've got to heal and we've got to start to send different messages to our children, to our daughters, to our son, to our folk, because who is it okay to tell? Mm. Mm. We can continue to say somebody's got to tell somebody, but, but I listen to droves of people who have told people and, and it didn't go well. It really did I'm going to say it a different way. Families have got to stop supporting predators within the families. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. Because stop. you are creating a generation of trauma uh, in, 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 in our community that has to stop That's right. right now. That's right. Okay. I don't know. I just got a little. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because that, that's the truth. That's the matter of it, right? When we say, oh, he didn't mean it that way. Oh, no. People are harmed and hurting. Families are crumbling. But families can heal. Yeah. Right? Just, you, even, we're, George, you know, and I know, there are parts of the way we live in the world. There is a part perpetrator and victim in all of us. There are things we say. There are things we do that, that on the spectrum fall. But we don't have to stay there. Yeah. So can we stop blaming and putting the onus on the people who've been harmed? And can we just say, what can we do to help you heal? And what is a way in which you can find justice in this? And I should tell you that uh, as the co-director of Air House, uh, adult survivors of childhood sexual assault who've never told anyone are entitled to free therapeutic counseling. You can talk to somebody about that thing that you never told anybody That's right. to get the help and the healing that you deserve. I love what you said about healing, that we need healing. Uh, Terry Williams, a good friend of mine, uh, wrote a book called The Healing Starts With Us. Right. And we we have the right to heal. So let me just give out uh, the way that you can heal and begin that journey for yourself. Nobody's forcing you to do it, but this is how you do it. 315-468-3260. Say you heard this thing on the radio and you want to start a conversation to begin a journey. www.verahouse.org. You can chat it up if you uh, if that's safer for you to do that. Uh, but call and 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 this agency is there for your support. But more, and, you, and this is a survivor's network as well. Angela, yeah. anything else you, you want to add? Yeah, I wanted to say one thing. One of the things I heard, George, is um, people told me, just wait, our Kelly is going to get out too. Mm. Yeah. And if that doesn't send a message, that, that, if that doesn't send a message, right? So the first thing people are thinking when Bill Cosby is now, this is overturned. Oh, Angela, Bill. R. Kelly is going to get out too. That nothing else to be said, because that what that's what you're saying. You think about women. Mm. That's what you think about people, and 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 you're talking about young women. Both of these men had an affinity for women who were much younger than they. Yeah, and used their power and their position as a weapon. Correct. And I think I don't think we and and I think. There's this, I want you to address one more thing before we go, if you have the time. I do. That, and that is this. What do you want to say to black folk? Mm -hmm. Oh, black mm -hmm. folk. Mm -hmm. George. Did I do that? <laughs> George. The family secrets are killing us. Mm. Family secrets are killing us. In fact, let me say it this way. The illnesses and diseases in our body start mm. to show because our souls are hurting and broken. Powerful. And, and until we recognize the ancestral trauma that has occurred 
has actually created what we have now in our own families, those secrets are killing us figuratively and physically. And until we decide to say stop and bring those things out into the open, I think we'll keep continuing down this road, unfortunately. Angela Douglas is the co-director of Vera House. Vera House support line is 315-468-3260, verahouse.org for your chat. And if you are a survivor, uh, contact Angela Douglas. Uh, the, he the hope and the healing is available to you. Um, more to come on this topic, obviously, but we wanted to provide some perspective for those of you who are disappointed, but for those of you who are also saying, well, you know, he should have got out, whatever. Um, Felicia Rashad knows that she needed to not say what she said, but we'll, yeah. we'll, that's that, that we'll save that for another day. Okay, so now that I said it, you know, she was like, justice has been served. And I was counting down for, before that, that statement was going to be, quote, retracted. And when Howard University was going to issue a statement, which they did, and they basically said, we stand by survivors. And her, her, her tweet was insensitive. And Absolutely. I'm sure she recognizes that what she basically said, a miscarriage of justice has been righted or whatever she said. Uh, uh, it was so bad that even Debbie Allen started to, to trend. Because <laughs> it was like, girl, go get your sister. Anyway, girlhouse.org, 468-3260, area code 315, uh, to get the support you need. Angela Douglas is the co-director of Vera House, the domestic violence and support agency that prevents, responds, and partners to end domestic violence, sexual assault, and other forms of abuse. Inspiration for the nation.